let's talk about champagne. So Chris isn't here tonight, and I know better than to do a review by myself with a rosé. We all know what happens when I do reviews with rosés without Chris. 30 years of playing rugby, I've had more concussions than I'll admit to a neurologist. I don't need any more of that. So tonight, we are going to talk about the Belcassement Sous Blanc. This is really, really special. I've had this champagne before, and I'm really excited to review it tonight. And I think Bill Casamont, the house, let alone this style in particular, doesn't get the attention that I believe it deserves. It is an incredible house with 200 years of history. This house goes back to 1818, and man, like it, it, they produce some incredible champ champagnes, and the Soubois is one of them. The Soubois is special not only because it comes from this fantastic house, but it is vinified in 100% oak casks. That means it goes from pressing right into these barrels, and that's where the wine is made. After that, it's put into bottles, and it goes and rests on these for, are you ready for this? Six to seven years. For a non-vintage, that's pretty, that's pretty impressive. Six to seven years resting on leaves. That is really awesome. Another really important thing about this champagne is that some of the wine during this process does not go under malolactic fermentation, they arrest that. And the reason they do that is so that the Chardonnay isn't completely muted out by the Meunier and the Noir and the Oak and the rest of the process of malolactic fermentation that's going on. You want to maintain a little bit of that acidity and you want to maintain that freshness from the Chardonnay or else why have it in there and especially why have it in there from the Cote de Blanc, okay? It would be a waste, and Bill Casamon really understands that and made sure that that Chardonnay is allowed to come out and that the Meunier and the Noir and everything else doesn't completely mute it out. I'm really excited to try this. I'm really, really excited. This is, this is an incredible champagne, and wow. Let's, uh, you know, let's, uh, let's open this. This is my favorite part, is opening this up. This one's gonna be a challenge today. That's all right. Everything else today has been a complete challenge, so why should this be any different? But the only thing that is is gonna happen is, yes, this bottle is gonna get opened, and yes, I'm going to enjoy this because it has been a week and a half, and having this tonight and sharing this with you is gonna make everything better for me. All right. Y'all ready? I get nervous. There we go. Oh, okay. Whew, all right. The appearance. Now, I do the best I can with the camera I have, and I have a pretty good camera, and I have a really good lens. And when we show you some eye candy, hopefully you'll be able to see the absolute radiance of this champagne. It is, it is like looking at liquid crystal. It has glints of gold, it has glints of green, and it is just beautiful, and those bubbles, if you can see them, you'll see them in the eye candy. You know what? Have a look at some eye candy. 
Those bubbles are super tight. They are very fine and they just stream so uniformly and that is a testament to its aging. Good bubble structure, that's aging. That clarity, that, that crystal, crystal clearness of it all is attention to care and detail. You are gonna get that gold flake, that, that, that greenish gold, gold tint, and that's obviously gonna come from the Meunier and the Noir, but man, that is just beautiful. On the aroma, ooh, that hits you hard. And, and immediately, you know, even when you open the bottle, you know you're dealing with something that's been a lot of time in oak, okay? It's not a bad thing, not by any stretch of imagination, but be forewarned, this is powerful. That knows Wow, that is, that is strong. It is fruity. There's some dried fruit. It's a little bit of dried cherry. There's a little bit of, of dried citrus in there too. Wow, that's... The, on the nose, there's, you do get that, that buttery hint to it. It's there. There is a bit of brioche here, okay? Um, not as much as I was expecting, but there's a, there's, a, there's a nose of brioche. All right, let's get into this. Ooh. <laughs> oh, wow. There's a lot to unpack here, okay? So first off, the brioche you get on the palate, okay? And it's like a grilled or toasted brioche, okay? Imagine like taking some brioche bread or some sweet bread and giving it this little char, okay? With a little bit of butter on top. That's what it tastes like. And it's got this sweetness to it, which I, I'm not surprised with that seven grams per liter but I'm getting that sweetness and it, it's, it's complex sweetness. It's not quite caramel. English toffee, that, that's kind of what it, it reminds me of. That is complex. You do get that freshness and that astringent nature of that Chardonnay, it's there. That fruitiness of the Meunier is there. And tying them together is that middle brother of that Pinot Noir. There is layers and layers and layers of flavor here. And its finish is long. Wow. I'm, I'm really, really, really impressed with this. Like I said, I've had it before, but I'm, wow. That is so intense. And usually with intense champagnes, um, sometimes I have a bad aftertaste, you know, that, that length is a little too long. And as the compounds sort of, you know, meld and sort of, you know, <laughs> break down in the process, it, it, it can leave a, you know, sometimes an, an acrid taste. And I'm not a fan of that. Some people are, some people don't care. I'm not a fan of that. This does not have that at all. This finish is clean. It is long. And as those compounds do sort of break down, on their way through the process. Yeah, you, you, you do taste that, but that happens with every champagne. So, so I'm not saying that as a negative. This is just tight. This is complex. This, this is, this is, this is, that is a well-dressed glass of champagne. <laughs> That intensity is just, I love oak. I love champagnes that spend time in oak barrels, and many, 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 many do. Especially the grower producers. Most of them are gonna put their champagnes through an oak process. Whether or not it goes into a malolactic fermentation is, is a different story. But most of them are gonna touch oak. The bigger houses, maybe not so much because while well, they're dealing in millions and millions and millions and millions of bottles a year, that's expensive and that might not be what they're, they're going for nor their flavor profile. But Bill Casamon with the Soubois, they're making it 
the highlight. They're saying, yeah, we, we do all these other champagnes, we do all these other things, but when it comes to something that is hyper-focused on that intensity of that oak flavor, of that, that strength, that intensity, but still mellowed out and tempered with, with a great mix of the Pinot, the, the Meunier, and the Chardonnay, this is an incredible champagne. This is, this is definitely, um, it, it's going to come in on the pricier side, so be mindful of that. You, you are going to pay a premium for something like this, but this is well worth the, the investment. This is an incredible champagne, and I, 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 I want to stop talking and have some more. And those bubbles are still going. You know, usually the bubbles will stop after a little while, especially when the glass gets kind of down to this point. The bubbles will stop, but the effervescence is still there. The bubbles are still going here. They're, 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 still, they're still flowing. Now, at this point, you know, I really want to get a different nose on this. I understand the champagne. It, it, it is it is pushing my knowledge and that's a that's that's a good thing it's pushing my knowledge it's pushing my experience I'm struggling to deconstruct it not because it's hard to deconstruct but because this is a level up and wow I like a challenge and, and I'm, I'm getting I'm getting these things I'm really I, I'm getting that freshness I'm getting that fruitiness I'm getting the the dried fruit I'm getting some fresh fruit um, I'm getting that that buttery note on the nose. I'm getting now uh, now that it's gone through my mouth and I've had some. Now I can when I put my nose in there. Now I can get that 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 brioche that that charred brioche that that toffee that candy flavor uh, note. And on the nose, I mean it, this is powerful, but at the same time, it's mellow. I mean, it, it, it's, it's hard to explain. It, it, you know, you can be powerful and you can be mellow at the same time. This is both. This is very powerful, but at the same time, it, it's very chill. Like, would I drink this every single day? Ooh. If I had an infinite supply of this and this is all I had to drink, oh, I'd be very happy with this. But if you have this too many times in a row, say if you had, like, this twice in a row... Um, it, it could could make it difficult for you to taste and discern a lighter, more like like a, a Blanc de Blanc. You don't want to follow up with a Blanc de Blanc with this. Like th this is going to this is the star of the show. The, this power, this 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 depth. And this is very deep. The oakiness to it. The the heavy flavors to it. Yeah, th they're going to sit on your palate for a little while. What would I pair this with now? This gets controversial because um, I think some champagnes shouldn't be paired with anything at all. They should be standalones. This, this could go well with maybe poultry, okay? Um, grilled poultry, a f f something with fresh flavors, something that is, is alive and lively with, with, with lighter, fresher, citrusy flavors and fresh herbs. Not a cream sauce. There's not enough acidity in this to, to cut through a cream sauce or definitely nothing too spicy. Mild Indian, I, I, I do this with a mild Indian. Um, I would do this with a good, good steak, okay? But again, keeping it on the light side, keeping that steak, you know, salt and pepper, nothing more, maybe a pat of butter on the end of it, and that's about the extent of it. Um, you know what I also would say that this would work well with? <sighs> you were so bold. Barbecue. I know, I know, I know, barbecue. This would work well with barbecue. It has enough fruitiness because if you barbecue like I do, you use fruit wood, you're using apple, you're using cherries, and then you use pecan, and using hickory. And when you're looking for those fruity notes, that's what that apple and the cherry and the pecan, they're gonna give you those fruity notes. 
and if you are gonna barbecue something and you're using those woods, this would match beautifully with that. This, this would be the, an amazing dance partner. As far as a dessert, champagne, too many variables. I, I would not do this with a dessert. This is either a standalone champagne, uh, aperitif, you know, you wanna welcome your guests, hey, boom, open that up. This, this would work well for that. Um, as far as this is coming from me, like I said, keep it to chicken, light, fresh, um, and you, you will not go wrong. So, wow, I, 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 I am very happy. My, my day started off kind of on the rough side. It's been a rough week. Um, but this has really, really elevated my, my, my night and wow. The champagne in this house just does not get the attention it deserves. And I don't know why. Um, but hopefully tonight I've exposed more people to it and hopefully you get a chance to try this. The Belcastamol. And it's not, <laughs> my French is terrible. <laughs> my French is terrible. But it's beer cat salmon. I mean, it, it, it's not beer, it's not beer cat salmon. No, beer cat salmon. Okay. Anyway, thank you all again for in coming out along for this little journey. Champagne every day. Thank you.